Hi guys, it's me Quinn, and as always, if you appreciate my content, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. Hi guys, it's Quinn, and today we will be discussing a book by one of my favorite authors, Arthur C. Clarke, and that book is Rendezvous with Rama. So keep in mind, we are going to talk about some of the events from the book, so spoiler warning! As some of you may know, Denis Villeneuve, who directed Dune and will be directing Dune Part 2, will also be working on a Rendezvous with Rama movie at some point in the future, and that's very exciting because Rendezvous with Rama is definitely very much, I would say, in the style of something that Denis Villeneuve would direct. I would actually say it shares some similarities to his movie Arrival. And once I give you a general sense of what this novel is about, I think you'll understand if you've seen that movie. So, in 1923, Edwin Hubble discovered galaxies outside our own. He discovered that the universe was made up of all these galaxies. And ever since then, science fiction authors like Asimov and Heinlein and Arthur C. Clarke and Ray Bradbury and countless others dreamed of alien beings, alien life forms. What are they like? What is their technology like? Are they nice? Are they mean? But one of the biggest questions that was on everyone's mind is, what would happen if we came into contact with aliens? What happens when we finally encounter life from beyond the stars? And that is essentially what this book is about. It is about our first contact with any sort of alien intelligence. So this book takes place in the 22nd century, and it's at a time when the Earth was hit by an asteroid, and because of this they invented Space Guard, which allowed them to monitor objects that were coming in and out of the solar system so that they could avoid anything like that happening again. So they eventually identified this cylindrical object. It's 50 kilometers long, it's absolutely gigantic, and they also noticed that it's not orbiting the sun. It seems to have its own propulsion, and it's also moving very fast. So they send a probe, they take pictures of it, and they come to the conclusion that this is definitely not a naturally forming object. It is an alien spacecraft, and it is the first that humankind has ever encountered. So they name the object Rama after a Hindu god, and it is mentioned in the book that basically they used the Hindu pantheon because they had already like used all the names from Greek and Roman philosophies. So they used the name Rama, who is, I think, one of the forms of the supreme being Vishnu in the Hindu religion. So the novel itself is quite short. It deals with the crew of the ship Endeavor intercepting the Rama ship and boarding it and basically exploring a little bit and discovering the various weird and anomalous things inside. There are large structures that appear like buildings and they're grouped together in cities. The entire thing is a cylinder, as I mentioned, and there's a large ocean that stretches around the cylinder and it, there's waves because of the motion of the cylinder, and that's due to the vessel itself making course corrections throughout outer space. There's all sorts of half-living, half-mechanical organisms running around, which the book names biots. At one point, they discover holograms, and they conclude that these are more or less diagrams of the technology and tools that whoever the aliens were that built Rama could create. All in all, this book is pretty similar to a lot of science fiction from the 70s, from the 60s, but if you are reading it, you kind of have to remember that this is not a modern novel. A lot of the tropes that we take for granted in science fiction were invented by people like Arthur C. Clarke, and these are things that we've seen repeated over and over again in books that have come out since. So a lot of people read this book and they think, oh, it was boring, oh, not much happened. And I think that the reason they think that is is because a lot of people copied Arthur C. Clarke's work, and as time went on, of course, added a bunch of bells and whistles to it. So a lot of people, when reading this particular book, feel like it doesn't quite have enough going on. Now, that being said, the later books do kind of get a bit more complicated. There's a lot more going on in those books. Now, at the end of this first one, there is a kind of twist which reveals that the Ramans do everything in three. So it's kind of implying that they're probably going to come back, and they do in the later books. 
So we don't know if Denis Villeneuve is going to incorporate some of the ideas that come into play because there's a lot of interesting developments that come up later on in the books and there's a lot of things that he could sprinkle in to make things a bit more fun and interesting for a modern audience. But even if he adapted the movie essentially straightforward, I think it would be a beautiful film simply because he can direct it and he's really good at putting gravitas and weight into things. Now one more thing I want to talk about in this book is what I think is one of the more interesting themes that pop up towards the end. So essentially humanity attempts to destroy the ramen vessel because it's an, it's an unknown, it's an alien spacecraft, they don't know whether it's a threat or not, so they just attempt to destroy it. And the bomb is disarmed, but the attempt is made. And obviously Arthur C. Clarke is saying something about humans just kind of don't like what we don't understand. We're afraid of it, and a lot of times our first instinct is to destroy the thing we don't understand, to blow it up. Which is also, interestingly enough, a plot in Villeneuve's movie Arrival, which I know is based on a short story called Story of Your Life, but I don't believe that part is based on the short story. I think that was something that Villeneuve invented for the movie, but that's clearly quite similar to Rama, and since I know that Villeneuve was a fan of science fiction his whole life, he read Dune Young, he probably read This Young, I suspect that Rama was the influence for that. Now, should you read Rama? Now, I would say for the average person, yes, if you plan on continuing to the other three books. But I don't know that if you're not explicitly a fan of classic science fiction, if you will enjoy the first book by itself that much without continuing on to the rest of them. I, for one, can totally read Rendezvous with Rama and love it um, and place it in the context of its time and in context with the work that was being put out around it and love it for what it is. But as far as like a narrative story, there's not a lot of story here. There's not in a lot in the way of like characters that you're really gonna remember that much. But you know, that's typical of science fiction, particularly of the time. All right, guys, that's all we have for today. If you appreciate my content, make sure you like and subscribe for more Quinn's ideas. Mm -hmm.